welcome to Winning Conversations. We are so glad you are here today. We sat down with two great ministers in our house, Joseph LeMay, our outreach director, and Vic Boone. Uh, you guys know them as the crew that just went over to Tanzania and did a 21-day outreach with food and the ministering the word and meeting natural needs as well as seeing God just move in incredible ways. So we wanted to strike why the iron was hot, sit down and hear some of their incredible stories, what God did while they were over there and where they're going next um, with the ministry, with outreach and what the vision is moving forward. So it's a really sweet conversation um, and we're, let's go ahead and jump right in. Welcome to the podcast. Well, I should say welcome back to the podcast. Both of you have been here individually but now you're here together to talk about this trip so welcome welcome Absolutely. well good afternoon <laughs> nice good afternoon good to see y'all very good to see you. i'm excited to hear about y'all's trip oh. um if you f tell the listeners who don't know where y'all just came back from oh brother vic please we just got back from arusha tanzania um, we did a missions trip over in africa which was great. 21 days. That's the crazy number. Yeah. It's a nice Three long trip. Three solid weeks is not nothing. That's a lot. Yeah. yeah. It is. Yeah. Tell them why, Brother Vic. Tell them what, why <laughs> the Lord put it on your heart for three weeks. Because we, you had been discussing that with me. Yeah. I, I had uh, been talking about it. And I just knew two weeks wasn't going to be enough time to do everything that the Lord had put on my heart. And... I didn't know if I could do three weeks, be honest. Yeah. Because, I mean, for as a uh, different culture, different uh, foods, and I, I'm like, I wasn't sure if I could do this. And yeah. I know that if God called me to go, then God was going to give me the grace to do the things that I needed to do. And he did, you know, and I'm so grateful for that. Yeah, and the timing of it also, because I know we were discussing the timing, and then the Lord finally put it on your heart, the exact time to go, which which worked out for, for our benefit, especially yours, when we got there. It did. Did your wives just miss you so much? Yeah, there were two people I had to get permission from. One was the Lord, and the other one was the wife. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, I don't know how you get 21 days like that. I'm like, I can tell you right now, I was like, man, that would never have happened in my house. But so I love that. Can you back up a minute? Like, how did the like the I, the genesis of this trip? I know it was put on your heart, but how did you guys link up to do this trip together? Well, well, I had been praying about it, and. You know, when God, uh, when Jesus sent out the disciples, mm -hmm. he sent them out two by two. And so I knew deep down inside I wasn't supposed to go by myself. But I didn't know who to ask or anything. And so I was just praying about it. God, who would you have to go with me? You would reveal it to me. And one Wednesday night we was in service and I just went up to Joseph and I said, you know, I'm getting ready to go to Africa. And he said, really? Oh, man. man, I would love to go. Oh, I yeah. said, you would? <laughs> yes. And he said, yeah. I said, well, you can go with me. <laughs> Great. And the standard response is, I'm going to pray about it, yeah. but you, are, you already know I want to go. That's and amazing. And so that's, that's how we got hooked up together because I, I knew in my gut, I knew that I wasn't supposed to go by myself. Yeah. I just knew it, you know, and... And, and I said, Lord, if I'm not supposed to go by myself, give me something to stand on. And then that's when the Holy Spirit revealed to me that when Jesus sent the disciples out, he sent them out two by two. Yeah. That was it for me. Yeah. And, and uh, one of the prayer services that pastors, I think it was one of the Monday nights Pastor Justin was praying. All of a sudden it came up out of the Holy Spirit. It came, you know, we're going to start sending people out like Paul and Silas. And when he said that, I, maybe it was a Sunday service that he had said that on. And that was right after you had come and actually said that to me about going out two by two. So that was just like a confirmation. And so you knew in your heart already, the Holy Spirit had put it on you that you're going to Africa. Yes. And you were like, just, yes, please. I'm down. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm down to go. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And then that, that was pretty much, all right, we're going. Yeah. And then you started doing the details of getting ready of when to go, where to go, who to go. Because you've been to Africa before, correct? Right. Actually. Okay. And you've been as well or no? Yeah, well, I've never been to Tanzania before. Okay. Um, but I, I've been to Kenya a couple times. Yeah. We went to Guatemala a couple times. I've been to Poland, Czechoslovakia, you know, different places like that do emissions work. But when I found out about Tanzania, it was like, oh, man, this is just exciting. Yeah, this is 
yeah, Lord. Holy Spirit just started jumping up and down on the inside of me. That's awesome. Yeah. So I what was, was the preparation like? Like, what did you take over there and what did you bring with you? What was the prep like? Well, first, it was a lot of prayer. Uh, Vic's got a good team over there. We had a lot of, we had uh, three good individuals over there that I just thank the Lord. It's just an awesome team that he had over there. And, well, the preparation was to make sure that we had everything that we needed mm -hmm. to take with us because, there are some things over there that, you know, you may not be able to find over there. That So you got to make sure you make a list of everything you're going to need. And you got to check off on that list. Mm -hmm. Make sure you got everything. Because, you know, you th you don't expect to, you know, get sick or anything like that. You, you're not expecting that. But things do happen sometimes. Yeah. So, you know, you want to make sure you got any and everything that you possibly going to need. Like, I asked the guy, I said, what's the weather like over there? Oh, he said, it's hot. <laughs> well, we get over there, it's 56 degrees. <laughs> in the know, morning. In, in the morning, then at night, then the day is up about 75, 76. So I really didn't have the, you know. <laughs> yes. It was lovely. Clothes, Sounds lovely. You know, yeah. and so that, that was, that was kind of different, you yeah. know. And, and then we, the food, the food. You can't take um, all that food with you, so. Yeah. Yeah, and the food, I'm telling you, you could you know, we, we took food with us, mm -hmm. you know, and but you got, you know, it's certain things you can take and certain things you can't take, yeah. you know, and and when you get there, you know, it's like, okay, what are we going to eat? And I'm just, I mean, it's no nothing against them, but don't think you're going to go there and go to maybe... What a burger or the culture's different. The culture's it's just so totally different. Totally different. Yeah. You're not gonna find it. They're more of a Burger yeah. King kind of people. Right? <laughs> oh my burger, gosh, no whatever. But we did we did run across a Pizza Hut. Yes. What interesting. There was a Pizza Hut there. But was it like serving Pizza Hut pizza or was pizza it like, Hut, uh, but pizza it's Hut? it's not the same. Okay. Very interesting. So but we did not eat uh at Pizza Hut. <laughs> <laughs> and and reason why because they, they told us it's not the same, you know. So All right. We didn't eat them. What was your mission when you got there? Like, what was your overall mission goal mm -hmm. going to Tanzania? The goal to go uh, was to feed the widows. Okay. You know, a, there are a lot of widows take care of their grandchildren. Mm -hmm. their, their children go off and leave them for whatever reason. or they on drugs? Maybe they've died. Or whatever, and the the grandparents is taking care of the kids. So, you know, and I, I read in the Bible where that we ought to take care of the widows and the orphans. And I when I read that, it was just something just jumped out at me, and I'm like, I gotta do something to help the widows. Mm -hmm. And in 2019, when I went, I I did an outreach and I fed a hundred widows. And so this time I knew I was supposed to go, but I said, God, now if if this is you really telling me to go back, then I want to feed 150 widows. I'm stretching myself. Mm -hmm. I'm like, where am I going to get the funds for this? I, I, how am I going to do this? I don't know. Well, when God tells you to do something, he's already provided. Right. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a problem for getting the finances. Everything came in. I mean, it wasn't a problem. And so I just thank God for that. We was able to take care of the widows. And I'm telling you, they loved that those care packages. And as I was giving them away, I would have Brother Joseph to grab the bags and take it to the, you know, with the widow let so to their seat, because we was in a church. Mm -hmm. Well, they wouldn't let him. They, they wouldn't know. Let this take... mine. They, they wouldn't let the bag go, you know. And those One... bags were 50 pounds. 50 at pounds. Least 50 pounds. And these were, these were, these were kind of. Little ladies. Were little elderly ladies. And they would not let you take it. <laughs> it's mine now. It's, yeah. And I love the that. Thing about it, they, they needed the food, not only for them, but for their children. Yeah. Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. some of them only eat one meal a day. Think of it. One meal a day. We throw away more food in a day than they can eat in a day. How's that for perspective? You know? Yeah. And, they, well, I, I think about it. 
I, I look at my own family, my 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 daughter, my grandchildren. Well, I don't want that. I want McDonald's. You know, you cook a meal and then they don't want to eat it. Say, I don't want that. Then I, I go to McDonald's. <sighs> well, whatever you set before them, they eat it and yeah. they eat all of it. Every yes. bit of it. Yeah, and widows in that society, it's not like our society. It's not like government aid that helps them and mm -hmm. things like that. Most of those widows over there, they, they don't have any support at all. That's right. They don't have any. And, and you know, they're trying to not only take care of them, but their grandchildren. Yeah. And so that that's it's really hard. But I just have a, a, a love for these widows. And, you know, I... I guess the reason why my mother was a single mother mm -hmm. with eight children, me being the youngest, but I had brothers and sisters that had left and moved out. But I saw the struggles yeah. that she went through. And ever since then, I, I, I think that's why it's been on my heart to help the widows. Even though we came up very, I came up very hard. But now that God has blessed me, I heard the word of God say, freely have I given unto you, freely give. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I do everything I can do to try to help the people. That I, I mean, I just got a passion for it. I, yeah. I, it's, it's not the same. I can't explain it. All I know, you know, people will ask me, hey, when you going back to Africa? <laughs> and I tell them, and they say, well, I want to give you something. So what was that like? When you got there, what were you like, Joseph? You've like you've been to, you've traveled. You've obviously you guys have been to ministries before. But when you got there and it was under your own umbrella, it was under the you know the VBMI. This was your trip, and you were there, you know, as like you know guys and partner in arms, sent out two by two. What was that first experience like? The first church like? Well, it was exciting because, like I said earlier, uh, Brother Vic had a good team over there. Um, you had Pastor Carroll, you had Barton, and you had Barnabas, which which are three excellent people that were over there. And before we got over there, we, we had a lot of prayer together, uh, coordinated a lot of things together, and they were the feet on the ground that set up all the preparation work so that when we arrived there, they had basically pretty much had set up all the things that were on uh, Vic's heart that the Lord told him that he wanted to do, and he relayed it to them. And the Lord gave them the wisdom and the favor to set all of that up. So when we got there, it, was, it, it wasn't as much of a surprise because we already knew that the Lord had set it up through them. Mm -hmm. But anytime you go to a new culture, you're going to see cultural differences, right? Yeah. And what Vic and I noticed right away was was the hunger they had on their hearts for the yes. moving of the Holy Spirit yes. and the hunger that they had on their hearts for the Word of God. I mean, they appreciated all the physical stuff that we brought, the food that Brother Vic brought, the backpacks that the girls got. But, man, they were just, I think they were even more excited about the Word and I mean, every place we went, the Holy Spirit moved. I mean, they invited Amen. the presence yes. of the Holy Spirit. That's what really impressed us. I wasn't expecting that. I, I was kind of expecting maybe it wouldn't, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit wouldn't be as strong <laughs> as he was. But when we went to that Maasai church out there in the middle of the, the desert out there, oh, my goodness, with the dust blowing everywhere, those those little <laughs> ladies started dancing. And the Holy Spirit came in there, that little old tin wood church. Wow. Yeah. And and, and I, that's what I told Joseph. I said, man, I said, yeah, you've been to Africa before, but you haven't seen anything like this. Mm. And and see, the thing was, when you go with a team, you're limited to what you can do. Mm -hmm. You're limited to where you can go. Yeah, the size of the team. And mm -hmm. it's because of the size of the team, but because it was just me and Joseph, and then my driver, he's from there, and so he he's, he can take us around and show us stuff. Yeah. And so we were able to see the city. We were able to see how the how the people live on a day to day basis. It's like a, and and no disrespect, but it's like the the city of Arusha is like a big flea market. Yeah. You know, everybody got some type of small business. Mm -hmm. They're selling something, whether it's fruit whether it's vegetables, whether it's little bracelets, food, whatever. They, the clothing, they, you see them on the side selling shoes, used shoes, used clothes. Everybody has some type of business 
and this is how they survive. Yeah, very few beggars, very few. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Very business oriented. And one of the other things we noticed, there were not maybe one heavy set lady there. <laughs> I mean, they were all in shape. Guys running with buggies. I mean, impressive. And, and when they talking about running with buggies, these was like trailers yeah. with big car tires on them, and they holding them down, and they running down the street with them, yeah. with full of, you know, might be food, might be um, mangoes or wow. watermelons or pineapples. <laughs> All kind of stuff, you know, but Very this impressive. is what they have to do to live. Yeah. yeah. And, and a lot of them don't day. have, there's a lot of vehicles there, but most of the people don't have vehicles. Yeah. So one of the things that really caught my surprise was, is everybody's riding these little motorcycles and you see three or four, sometimes a whole family on, on a motorcycle. motorcycle. Yeah. One on one motorcycle. motorcycle. <laughs> four people street. on one little motorcycle, like a, like, I mean, a little more like a 250 or something. You got four people on it. And the wow. two-lane highway can suddenly become four or five lanes when it starts queuing up, and those motorcycles are just zipping in and out. Oh. And some of these guys had furniture on the back of their bikes. One had a couch, remember? <laughs> had a a love seat on the, on the back of the motorcycle. <laughs> I was impressed. That's yeah. Wow. That's, yeah, that's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all held church services when you were there, correct? Yes. What was, what was like, the most impactful thing that you saw in one of the services that y'all held? I think... One of the most impactful that we had, I believe, well, it just it was few of them, but the one that we had at Victory Hall, I, I did a two-day minister's conference. And on the second day, the praise and worship was so high. Yes, intense. I really didn't have to preach. And I laid hands on everybody in there, and I, I mean, I literally felt drained. I prayed for healing and for increase and in salvation over everybody in the church. Now, this is what really moved me. As going over as Vic Boom Ministries International, as my first, I wasn't for sure how many people would show up. And I'm like, okay, God, I know you told me to do this. Mm -hmm. And the church was full. Yeah. Both days full. With pastors and, you know, it's probably been a minister's conference, but when they know that church is going on, mm -hmm. you can say minister's conference, everybody going to come. Yeah. <laughs> everybody coming because they love the Lord. Yeah. And they believe that the man of God was sent there for them because they yes. prayed and God sent the man of God to give them a word. That's what was impressive. They were hungry for the word. They were pulling it out of you. And when Brother Vic was going around that first time praying over people, the Holy Spirit was actually moving through the crowd of the individuals that were just sitting there waiting for their turn to come up. And we started seeing people just moving in the spirit. People were starting to get touched by the Holy Spirit while, while that was going on. And they hadn't even come up yet. That's how powerful the, it was, how powerful the Holy Spirit had been moving. Even the kids that had come with the mothers had come up. And we began to pray over the kids. And they, they were even dancing and praising and worshiping the Lord with everybody. It, there was just such a hunger there. And, the, and it just allowed the Holy Spirit to move everybody in there was just touched by the Holy Spirit. Everybody in there just didn't want to go. And you know, the culture here is so different from the culture there when it comes to church. The people there will walk for miles yeah. just to come hear the word. They'll stay in church all day. And I want to share this with you. I was, I preached in a church called Glory Land church and uh well bishop olam is the bishop and he's the bishop over 60 churches his wife pastor glory land church he didn't know me never seen me but he heard that i was coming and that i would be preaching in his church and this is his word to me who is this vic boom <laughs> those was his exact words he said, I had my secretary to Google you, and I listened to your message. He said, 
God has blessed you too much. He said, you got too much in you. He said, you need to, to preach in his camp meeting. He got 500 pastors in the meeting. And I know that some of them were just as capable or more capable than I was to preach in that meeting. Mm -hmm. But Brother Jerry been preaching <laughs> the year of the maximum. Yeah. The highest level attainable. This That was, I never would have expected it. And you did that on this trip? On this yeah. trip. How did it How did it go? Oh, it went great. Sorry to say it this way, but you're you got that amazing opportunity to preach at that. Past. Were you guys together still at that point? Yeah, in time? we were. Uh, Bishop Olam and his wife uh, Florence, I think her name, Pastor Florence. Florence yeah. They allowed me to go up and sit on the actual stage with them and sit next to them, which was interesting for me because um, I had never had that opportunity before. But Vic and I had already prayed about it and felt led by the Holy Spirit to pray for each other. When one was ministering, the other one would just kind of sit there and pray and kind of, you know, just, you know, support the other one while they were ministering. So that's what I was doing. And, um, and during praise and worship, um, Tanzanians love to express their joy through dance. That's one of the things they do. And it's not just the ladies, it's the men yeah. that, that will do it also. And so how can you not be sitting up there seeing all this going on and not be moved by the Holy Spirit? <laughs> and all of a sudden now I'm up Joseph, there dancing. Joseph, you got up and danced? I'm up there dancing, yeah. yes. Can, and, can we get some videos yeah, of this? Where, yeah. where is the documentation? <laughs> and, uh, after we, we, we went a couple days to the service just to sit in on the environment, and they let us sit up there. And then, of course, Vic got to preach on that Saturday there. And so Pastor Ol Bishop Olam came up to me at the end, and he gave me this big high five while we're up there dancing. He says, the Lord has set you free. <laughs> wow. And it was just the funniest thing. That's now, great. when I've come back here, I told Danny, and so now when we do praise and worship here, don't be surprised if you don't see me up here. You see, <laughs> I got the moves going on now. That's I awesome. love that so much. Yeah, but it, but it, but it just really impressed me that uh, the, the, the culture there, they just love to release their joy yeah. and mm -hmm. their thanksgiving through dancing. Yeah. And uh, and they're in rhythm. I mean, perfectly <laughs> in rhythm when they do that. And uh, that was one of the things that happened to us everywhere we went, especially with the f every food outreach we had. They didn't have anything to give us. And that's what touched our heart. They said, we don't have anything to give you. So they made these little crosses and gave us crosses and put them on our head. But the biggest thing they did as a thanks is they gave a dance. Mm -hmm. They would dance mm -hmm. and praise the Lord dancing as an and as an expression and a token of thank you to wow. the Lord and to us. No, I I love that though. That's, that's awesome. their expression. That's their way of giving yes. thanks. And when you ha don't have much, at least you're. I mean, they're giving something. That's the best yes. that they can do, and that's they do it with their all. I love that. Yeah, and here's the other thing that I that really impressed me about them is. I was the only white guy <laughs> for miles. I mean, it was just the neatest thing. So the little kids, when, when Barnabas took us over to Pastor Neiman's, Neiman's church, he put his, the little kids put their hands on my hair and they're rubbing my hair and they're mm -hmm. kind of rubbing me because, you know, they, they get to see, what do they call them, Zungus, You know, white guys. Um, Zungu. Um, Zungu. And so, but they're not racist. Yeah. They're, they're, they're just curious, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. But they were so loving, so friendly. They accepted me. They took me into their houses. Yeah. They fed me. I mean, that was the joy that I got out of that just as much as anything else. To me, that's the souvenir I took home. I love it. was that. the love that they gave me and the food that they shared with me and invited me into their homes. What an honor that was. And we got to get to that widow. We were talking about widows. We got to get to Widow Tina's, uh, how that whole thing turned about, because it was, it was during that minister's conference yeah. that she had come over and attended and uh, came up the pastor or brother Vic here, uh, Bishop Vic, and because uh, that's what they were calling the Bishop Vic. They called me the Bishop. And see, <laughs> if, if Bishop, there is different here than you know yeah. somebody that feeds you, and then also speak the yeah. word physical you know, and they, spiritual. They, they 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 look at you as a bishop. So mm -hmm. um, I remember Brother Joe telling me that they had called and say. When is the bishop coming back? You know, and he was explaining to me. I said, Bishop? He said, Yeah. He said, That's what they call you over there, you know. And so yeah. that for me, that that's that's an honor, you know. Yeah. Sure. But uh what Brother Joseph was talking yeah. about, Andy, you was that talking about about the the uh the phone and the chi the ten hands, chickens. Yeah. Well, this lady, she used to work with Bishop Gary Ebert when he was there and I know all of his staff. I 
I, you know, I, I just know all of them. And so this lady came to hear me preach at Victory Hall. And so she uh, asked my driver, Borden, to ask me if we could come over to our house and she feed us something. When they invite you to the house and they want to fix a meal, it's because of honor. Yeah. And this is a widow. This is a widow. Mm -hmm. And so I told Barton, I said, no, we're not going to be able to do that. And so she was out there when I told him, and she go, you know, kind of hold her head down in shame or, or, or like sad. Yeah, disappointed. Disappointed. And he said, see, you hurt her feelings. Oh, and I see, said, no, culturally, you're learning things. Yeah, yeah. We learned, yeah. We didn't know. I said, well, I didn't he mean to hurt a feeling. I said, well, tell her, <laughs> yeah. tell her we'll come over there. Then. Yeah, we'll, yeah. Come, we'll come, we'll come, we'll come. <laughs> and so he told her, and she started smiling, and she go, well, what you want to eat? I said, some tilapia and <laughs> chips, which is uh, french fries, basically. Mm -hmm. Because all this other stuff, man, I mean, just, <laughs> anyway, I said tilapia and fish. So, they take us over there. We all go over to her house. She got this little round hut. Had it very clean, nice. Had the yard fixed up with a chicken coop in the back. And so when we got there, the rooster kept crowing. Yeah, as we sat down to eat, you know, the blessing, we're sitting down, we're eating, and that rooster is, it's not a normal crow. I mean, it is just. He was just crowing. Just screeching crows. I mean, he <laughs> wouldn't stop. And, I, and finally, me, you know. You I, had to ask. I just said. Why is that rooster still crowing? I said, yeah, like he done lost his girlfriend now, or something. No, I'm sitting there with a piece These of... These are my exact words. And I'm Listen. sitting there with a piece of chicken in my mouth. <gasps> <laughs> no! <laughs> and Tell and she, she go, says. she looked she looked dead at Joseph while he got the chicken in his mouth. And she said, you're eating it. No! <laughs> so, so, she <laughs> so she sold her last chicken oh. her last hen chicken yeah mm -hmm. into us to fix a meal for us wow now, and then she didn't ask us for nothing no. listen she didn't ask for nothing yeah and she said well i'm believing god for 10 more chickens <sighs> just like that i say you believe in god for 10 chickens and i looked at joseph and he looked at me and we said well we want to buy you 10 more chickens yeah and so we sold into her to get 10 chickens and and Joseph was led to bless her to get her a phone. Mm -hmm. So once we finished our meal, we took her to the store. Our driver, her, me, Joseph, and uh, uh, Barnabas, our facilitator, mm -hmm. we took her. They knew somewhere to go and get a, a phone at a really good uh, rate. We went and got her a phone, and she was so happy. Now, she texts us. I just got another text from her last night. Uh -huh. so just tell just calling us pastors, bishops, you know, pastors, yeah. mm -hmm. thank you. Uh, again, just telling us thank you and just saying that she's praying for us and, you know, just how are we doing, you know, just constantly. But also the rooster got 10 he got, more girlfriends. He got a harem. <laughs> 10 more girls. He got yeah. a harem. <laughs> Moral of the story. More. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the rooster's like, all right. Wow. Well, <laughs> wow. That's incredible. But that's what I was talking about. I mean, how... How can you not be moved by the Lord when that happens? Yeah. I mean, this is stuff so in the Bible. Last. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is stuff you read in the Bible, like the like the widow that, that was wanting to feed her kid and all she had was that little cake left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and the other one that had lost her husband and all she had was that little vial of uh, oil left. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I thought of when, when she did that with us. And then there was another widow when we were at Victory in Christ Church that first Sunday when Vic was getting in the minister at another church, and I was over there. This widow had come up during the praise and worship as testimony time. She doesn't have much money, but she had made a vow to the Lord for something, and the Lord had come through and, and gave her what she had requested, and out of an attitude of gratitude, she brought just about everything she had and put it in an envelope. Mm -hmm. And she put this in the offering. And the Holy Spirit moved me so much on that that I actually took out money myself that the Lord had put on my heart to sow into that church. And I and I looked at Pastor uh, Carol, and I said, Carol, and I said, is it all right if I bring that uh, offering ba ba basket back up? And she said, yeah. I said, the Holy Spirit is just asking us to just join in her offering. So I put my offering in with that widow's offering, and then other people started coming up and putting their offering in with it. And it was a special offering that we everyone came together at the faith 
of that widow lady because she's believing in maximum. She's wanting more. And it was just a, a tremendous move of the Holy Spirit. And um, the one thing the Holy Spirit had us ministering to, to the widows and when we would go to the churches is faith, your confessions, mm -hmm. and also about you're not broke, you have a seed. Those were two big things, wasn't yeah. it, Brother yeah. Vic, that, that was, was coming it. out of our that hearts when we were ministering, and they were just absorbing it. And then you're seeing them following through with the actions of sowing. Mm -hmm. And it was just exciting. And then just another thing to mention, there were two Maasai elders. Now, these are two Maasai men. Mm -hmm. Talking about the moving of the Holy Spirit, women are just now starting to get a little bit of recognition in Tanzania. They're, we're starting to see that now in Tanzania because Brother Vic said last time he was there, five years earlier, four years earlier, mm -hmm. totally different. Well, you've got Pastor Carol there. That's, that's a female minister. There's other female ministers that are rising up over there. Two Maasai males that were in their 80s, they're, they're just village elders that mm -hmm. were in their 80s, came to, now this was when Brother Vic was ministering, the main service, and I was doing the children's service. Well, I just happened to be outside when they came up, and we began to talk to each other in the little bit of Swahili that I had learned. It's a beautiful <laughs> language. And so they began to talk to me in what English they knew. And so they went inside and sat down and listened to the message and they came outside afterwards and got to meet Pastor Carol, and they, they were actually honoring her mm -hmm. a, as a pastor. To me, that wow. was also yeah. very big. So that was another thing that happened when we were over there. We began to see the males actually begin to respect. Which is a big deal. Yes. Huge In fact, deal. that one church we went to, yeah. that, that male pastor actually and in went. Meru. Yeah, when, when Pastor Carol came in, he actually, as a demonstration, now he didn't know this had already happened, at the other church. Right. As a demonstration, he just all of a sudden bowed down and said, this is one of our lead pastors here and mm -hmm. gave her respect right in front of his entire congregation. That's that was unheard there. of. We can't comprehend that as yeah. much being here. But when you think uh, that is a that's a big, yeah. huge big, deal. Very big. Because Incredible. women, they're they they're second to the men. They yeah. they. You know, the men don't do nothing. Men don't wash dishes. Men don't cook. Mm -hmm. Men don't clean. Men don't do nothing. And, the you know, if if they do, then the woman will get in trouble if the, if the husband do any of the yeah. housework. Hmm. It can't do anything. But it's changing now. Yeah. It's changing. Yeah. Thank God. You know. Isn't that exciting? Yeah, that is very exciting. I have <laughs> kind of an odd, something that came to my mind was I've been on missions trips before, and I feel like when you're there, you're very in it, you're very passionate, you're hearing from God, all these things, and then you come back home, and you kind of get back into the groove of, like, real life and how, you know, our culture. How how has this trip changed your everyday life, and what what are you doing now that maybe you didn't do before that came from this trip specifically? Well, for me, the first really? thing I did is expression of gratitude when I praise the Lord has changed. Mm -hmm. You see me dancing now, <laughs> which never happened. Yeah. You know, and um, that, that really just changed my heart. It, it just took my praise to another level. That was one of the things. And the other thing is, is appreciation for the things that we have and the hunger for the word of yes. God, to just yes. keep the hunger of the word of God yes. flowing. Yeah, and the gospel now also is yeah. making a, a big difference because you had pointed out one of the uh, Maasai males that was at Victory in Christ Church mm -hmm. that you told me when you came four years earlier had just started coming there, and when we came back, the difference that you had seen in him. Yes, his name was Adam. When, when I first went there, he, you know, Maasai men are very tall, you probably seen them with the long sticks, and they'd be jumping up and down. Mm -hmm. And when I first went there, Adam was wearing his Maasai clothing. Well, when I went back in 2019, he was had on some shoes and some slacks and looked different, had on a hat. And so this time when me and Joseph went back, he was still like that. And I said, you know, the word works. Yeah, yeah. The word is working. It, it's changing them, you know, and it's changing them from the inside out. That that's the exciting part. Yeah, that's awesome. And so that that that's really that's big. You know, you you think you're not doing anything, but you you're helping them. Yeah. It was a lot of my side came to my uh, 
uh, my uh, ministers' conference. Now, a lot of them, you know, they may not have a lot. They they don't have a lot of funds. And in my meeting, what I talked about was my theme was don't limit God. Yeah, that was my theme. And and I had a, a great interpreter, and we was talking about. Uh, I talked about the words of your mouth. You can have what you say. Mm -hmm. And I was teaching them. I, I wasn't really preaching, but I was teaching mm -hmm. them that they can have what the word of God say, but they have to be careful about what they say and how they say it. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I had this one lady that her and her husband, they have a business. They, they uh, take food up into the Serengeti, into the hotels and her and her husband, sold a financial seed, U.S. dollars, into Vic Boom Ministries mm. because of what I was preaching. Yeah. I was preaching about sowing and giving mm -hmm. and tithing. I was telling them, whatever you have, give. I said, you may not have much, but you're never without the seed that it'll take to produce what you're believing God for. Yeah. And they got a hope to that. Mm. They had a hunger for that. And in that same meeting, we was at... Uh, Pastor Sangeeta told me, she said, when I was up praying for the people, she said, Vic, I saw a fire in your stomach. She said it was like an anointing. Just to, uh, j just to piggyback earlier, just to give you an idea of how excited they were to hear about sowing mm -hmm. and the prosperity message and the maximum and how you can attain the maximum. The average income, I looked it up online. I was just kind of curious. The average income over there is $150 a month. A month. Wow. A month. One and that's, month. that's a pretty good job, you know. And to see these individuals, you know, take what they can and bring it and then to give it. And then to hear stories like we heard a testimony from one of the ladies getting a really good paying job, not but a couple weeks. It was right when we were first there. And then just as we were ready to leave, we had heard a testimony from one of the ladies who had gotten a job. It, just very exciting to hear, but it just touches your mm -hmm. heart, you know, to see only $150 a month is an average, you know, for, for people that have a job there. So to see them take the prosperity message and to receive it, mm -hmm. and then to see them actually putting it into action. Yeah. I'm excited to see what happens the next time. And I'm going to yeah. say the next time we go back to hear the testimonies. Yeah. Like there's so much about this trip that there's so many details that I want to know more about, you know, just like, and there's things that you've talked about at restore uh, pastor Vic and some of the things that you've mentioned and just the, the blessing that's been this, um, like the big thing that I uh, kind of the summation of, we always talk about in this church, you know, the, the main theme is making winners in life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that is what this house stewards so well. Um, what does that now mean to you after this trip? To me, myself, personally? Making, to each of you, yes. Yeah, okay. Well, for me personally, making winners in life, it, it tells me that the Word of God is true and God is integral to His Word. Mm -hmm. And it tells me that if you stick and stay, it pays. Mm -hmm. And if you're patient and if you'll take the Word of God and believe it and confess it and stand on it and uh, don't get wavery or doubt and, and just trust the Lord and believe on Him and just wait on timing, doors will open and, and you will get to see those things that the Lord has has opened up for you. And to actually get to go to Tanzania and to take the same kind of making winners in life attitude and, and thought process with us, and then to see them take the same thing, and then to see them watch them do it, yeah. it it's just extremely rewarding. It just yeah. helps boost up your faith. It just helps boost up your confidence, and, and it just gets you at a level to where you want more. Yeah. Oh. Amen. And and for me, you know, that that was one of the things I I wanted to encourage each and every one of them who they was in Christ. Yeah. That's what I taught them. I, I I told them you are the head and not the tail. That's who you are in Christ. You you above and not beneath. Mm -hmm. You know, and I I was just teaching them, I, I say, some of you don't know who you are. You don't know your covenant right. You don't know what God has promised you. And I encourage them to get into the word, read the word, get hooked up with somebody that if you don't know it, get with somebody that can help you mm -hmm. 
understand God's word. And so that, you know, you see them and they be smiling and, and grinning. And, you know, when you, you know, you, you encouraging them, you building them up, you giving them that hope. And I, I talked about each and every one. And I say, you do, you know what God said about you? God said that he know the thoughts and the plan that he have for you and God thoughts and plans for you. They're good. They're not evil because over there, there's a lot of witchcraft. Mm-hmm. And and you can, at nighttime, there is a lot of heaviness. Mm-hmm. And you got to let the people know that Satan has already been defeated. Yeah. You have power over him. And you you do it through the word of God. Everybody got their Bibles out, and they got their pens, and they got their yeah. paper, and they writing. And, I mean, they, I mean, they into it. I mean, they 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 want the word, and that right there means a lot when you can see that they're getting what you're saying. Mm-hmm. That that's very touching. Vic Boom Ministries is planning on doing a feeding, a crusade. God been putting this on my heart, a crusade, a two maybe three day crusade, of feeding a village of seven hundred and fifty people. Now that's stretching me. <laughs> not not beside the the care packages. I'm gonna still do the care packages. But God put it in my heart. And I, I remember hearing Brother Copeland say God never told him to do something that was possible. That he yeah. felt that was possible. In the natural, I, I, I don't have the money to do mm-hmm. it. In the natural. But I'm believing that God is gonna give me the money to do this. But God had put that on my heart, and I want to do it. Not that I can be seen of man, but the people need the food, y'all. Mm-hmm. They need water. They need wells. And one of the one of the churches that we went to didn't even have running water. So when you go to the restroom, there's no running water there. Mm-hmm. Zero, zip. Oh, now, now I'm glad you said that. <laughs> Just for the record, I sent the money for them to put... Uh, pipe. They will be getting water. Nice. They're gonna send me uh, the the update that they put the pipelines in down into the village mm-hmm. and and into this church. And the village people will be able to come to the church and get water. That's amazing. So, you have vbmi.org is your website, correct? Yes. Are you gonna add this to your website so people like myself or others who are really curious to see what your ministry is doing that we can kind of keep updates? Yeah. On yes. the impact of your guys' trip. And these or are amazing give. testimonies like, hey, we got water here, we help this family there. Yes. Is there gonna be some of that there? Oh, so that absolutely. We can... Yeah, awesome. we're we're working on something like that now. And uh, I haven't gotten it all set up yet, but yes, I am working on it. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you guys. So, I mean, again, this has been Thank such you. a blessing to us, uh, this house. Thank you for having to hear us. you guys do your stories. I'm, I'm sure we could talk for hours about the things that happened out there. Yeah. And we are so excited to see more of it. I can't wait to see the updates on the website and then to see what, how the Lord's just moving in you guys in this house. Now that and you're we'll back. have photos and videos in the show notes too. Yes. We will definitely share the video of uh, brother Joseph dancing. Yes. <laughs> it yes. is worth the price of admission. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're so blessed by both of these men of God that went over and sowed their lives into Tanzania and to the places over there. If you want to connect, again, we will have linked in the show notes, um, Vic Boone Ministries website, as well as ways to connect with our Heritage Faith Outreaches. You know, we partner not only with Vic Boone, but several ministries within the house, people who are called to go beyond the walls of the church and really reach the nations, reach local communities. And uh, so if you want to get connected with any of those platforms, any of those ministries that are uh, not only birthed but partnered with and we come alongside at Heritage of Faith, I encourage you to click on that link and find out more information about that. And again, as Dan alluded to, we are excited to be moving to video format for our winning conversations. So we will look forward to seeing, and we will look forward to showing you all the great things God is doing, being able to see the faces of the people you're hearing about and connect in a different way 
Um, if you're looking for our podcast, you're going to find it on multiple podcast channels. You're going to find us on Instagram. You're going to find us on YouTube. And God is just moving. We just trusted him all along the way. And we want to be we want to make sure you're coming along for the journey. So this could be our last audio episode ever. Eek! Of course, we will produce an audio version of our video streams and uh, of our video episodes uh, for you guys to consume for those who are driving or doing the dishes or mowing the lawn or whatever you're doing when you listen to Winning Conversations. Um, but catch all the updates on our Instagram page. Catch all the updates on the church heritage of faith uh, social media platforms because we're going to be sharing it all there and we are really excited we have a few more things up our sleeves as we approach our anniversary our first year anniversary yay we're excited to see what god is doing so we look forward to seeing you next time on winning conversations